Now, the organization undoing tax abuse, which we know as OUTA, has scored another victory in its bid to force the Hawks to investigate two SASA contracts. There's also been an attempt to take action against 11 employees over those contracts. Now, these cost at least 229 million rand in the Social Security funds. To discuss this further, we're joined by advocate Stephanie Fick, who is OUTA's legal head. Stephanie, as always, I thank you very much for joining joining us this afternoon. And I suppose, as I've mentioned in uh, my, my intro, it is quite the victory uh, for Alta and I suppose broadly for South Africa in that these instances of corruption and irregular contracts being awarded are being uncovered, albeit at a slow pace. Uh, your thoughts on what's come out of the public protector around them? Yes, I really must just agree with you. This is obviously a, a, a victory for us as an organization, but as an organization, we, you know, we are there for our supporters, people that support us and support what we do. So this is a victory for accountability for each and every, you know, out of support and each and every citizen out there. So what the public protector or the, the, the acting public protector found is that, you know, there were irregularities in appointing um, um, two companies. Um, um, Azande and, and VL um, 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 Productions. And you know what? Part of the sh shenanigans and irregularities and, uh, that went on there is at the end, what it meant was that they received money for, for, for um, you know, not really doing what they were supposed to do. And we must remember this happened at Sasa. You know, the state agency that is responsible um, for social grants. So yet again, um, this is about corruption, making sure that we can't spend, you know, money is not spent on the stuff that it should be spent on. Um, and I think social grants specifically um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a is a is a sore point in South Africa in the sense that I sometimes wonder, um, you know, the, the amounts that that people get is it enough it, probably not i mean you 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 um uh, you you can't feed a family properly on the, on the amount of money that's available and by curbing corruption by making sure that we do not waste money means that we can spend it somewhere else Right. And now, of course, the Hawks have been called on to initiate an official investigation, a criminal one at that, against those who've been implicated in the report. But are you not concerned that despite the fact that we're going to see an investigation and, pros and hopefully uh, some criminal prosecution, uh, that over 200 million rand is probably not going to be recovered? Probably. Probably not, but that doesn't mean that Sasa shouldn't try. Mm -hmm. So, you know, except for this criminal investigation that um, should take place and hopefully, um, you know, people will be will be prosecuted and be held to account. Um, Sasa should also follow certain procedures. They should share their plan of action with, with the public protector's office, you know, making sure that there's consequence management, et cetera. But we also believe that, um, you know, these types of companies should be on a, on, a, on a blacklist, you know, that they do not get any other government contracts. And that Sasha should really contemplate, and, and, and that was also part of the, the recommendations, um, should seriously consider going after, uh, you know, claiming back that money from the companies that basically wasted funds that, that could, as I've said, uh, be used somewhere else. That's right. And of course, there's also been the call for the chief executive at Sasa to take um, some action around the 11 employees, which we assume still work uh, for Sasa. And what concerns me here, Stephanie, is that we've seen calls of this nature uh, for Prasa employees who are impl implicated in uh, corruption, transnet, the list goes on. And those processes of disciplinary and so take so long. And one would get despondent in that those who've been implicated earn a salary while these processes drag on and on and on. So I don't know, what kind of action would you like to see the CEO take? Uh, because uh, the public protector or the acting public protector isn't very specific. She just says action needs to be taken. What kind of action should we be seeing? Um, 
Um, well, we must remember that, you know, because of so many cases that involve the public protector, we know that she can make certain recommendations and that SASA should take that recommendations extremely serious. Mm. She cannot be ignored. The public protector's office cannot be ignored, but she cannot be specific. So yeah. on, on the one hand, she has now taken the accountability, saying that there should be accountability, but that SASA has... Um, still the responsibility to go and investigate um, and start disciplinary hearings. You know, so um, it is not to say that they should be fired, but you should start a process. And mm -hmm. hopefully, um, because the public protector has said, you know, you need to report back to me because my report needs to be implemented, that there should also be accountability, that, um, you know, this, the CEO has a limited uh, um, a period of time to do this. And I agree with you. I think we become despondent because, yes, you know, we talk about this, there's reports and nothing happens. So that's why this is so important, that we talk about it and keep tabs on what is happening and that disciplinary action shouldn't take an extremely long time. Yes, we have as a as an employee, we all have certain rights. Um, you know, there's there should be a reasonable process and and then obviously if you are fired, you should be fired for the right reasons. But it doesn't mean that the process should be dragged on and that we pay for suspended individuals. So um firstly, they must seriously consider suspending um the individuals, you know, who was was implicated and then starting this process, which is not just benefiting them. It's also benefiting the organization, making sure that people are just not on suspension and this drags on forever. And then just a final thought from you, Stephanie, just a way forward. It is not begging a conversation around increased oversights in contracts awarded to uh, institutions or relating to institutions of this uh, of this importance. SASA is extremely important for the social welfare of this country. The public protector does say that we need to consider the conduction of lifestyle audits. But going forward, a long-term form of oversight, is that not something that should be discussed? And perhaps if you could give a sense or an idea of what that oversight uh, body uh, or whatever it may be would look like. You know what? I am actually a firm believer that you don't need another oversight body. So I hear what you're saying and I agree with you because one feels that, you know, if they can't do the job, let's get an oversight body that can look at 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 at, at what they do. Contracts and these type of, let's call them corrupt contracts, because one does get the feeling that someone gets paid to get the, to, to make sure that these people get the, the contract. What one see out of this is, again, ethical leadership. If we have CEOs, CFOs, COOs, you know, the right people in the right positions, they are the oversight body that should ensure that, um, you know, an SOE and, 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 and government departments enter into contracts that's in the best interest of that department and then obviously the Republic of South Africa. And then secondly, what I think um, I, I want us to advocate for is that why have we waited four years for the public mm. protector to come out with a report? Um, we sent letters to some other oversight bodies. I mean, we, we did send letters to, 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 to the minister, to Treasury, um, to SASA saying, listen, there's, there's something wrong. Please just investigate this. I mean, you know, um, um, we have li limited ways of, of um, um, investigating these things. And again, hat off to, hat off, hat off to, to, to all the whistleblowers that were really to share with us the information. But yet again, nothing happened. So all I'm questioning is that if 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 everybody does what they are supposed to do, we don't need oversight bodies. Mm. And that um, you know, we must make sure again that, for example, the public protector's office is resourced enough that the right person is in the right position is in the position. It's a chapter nine institution, it's to, it's supposed to function on um, you know. Normal people, ordinary people, South Africans, are they supposed to, to act on behalf? So we should make sure that they are resourced. And that again points to let us, our expenditure in South Africa needs to be looked at. We need to spend our money responsibly so that we can sp have money to spend on a Chapter 9 institution, making sure that they have enough investigators um, so that they can investigate this type of things. Because if someone acted sooner, 
maybe we wouldn't have lost that amount of money. I mean, this contract was ended in, 20, in, in, in 2019. So although we welcome this report and are very happy, sometimes, you know, it might have been too late, although we applaud the, the call for accountability. Mm, absolutely. Thank you very much, as always, uh, uh, Stephanie, for your insights there. Uh,